Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about REITs that beat. And by beat, I don't mean beat an egg. I mean beating the S&P 500, even in these conditions. Here we go. Well, hello everyone. My name is Mike, the CPA. Thank you so much for being here. I want to take a moment to welcome all the new subscribers to the channel. We had about one to 200 new subscribers join us since last week. If you're brand new here, we make videos around finances and investing in taxes to help you build wealth. Now let's get into the content. This is going to be the first video that at the end of this video, I'll be answering a random viewer question. So stick around for that. The first re I want to discuss with you is the digital realty trust. This particular REIT has been doing fantastic under these current market conditions where most people are staying at home and trying to work from home. And the reason they're doing so well is because they focus on cloud-based computing in which they hold real estate that owns computer servers that companies rent out that space, pay that money for that space and so that they can operate their business remotely. And more so than ever, it is very important to be able to operate your business remotely as we've come to learn. All the information we're gonna be looking at on screen is coming from Yahoo Finance. That's where I pulled the majority of this information. And this is the summary page for the Digital Realty Trust. You can see the share price. Currently it offers a 3% yield, but look of how it's performed though, in terms of capital appreciation. This is what has caught me by surprise. This is a picture of the graph from Yahoo Finance, the year-to-date performance of the Digital Realty Trust. And it shows how much is it appreciated in value since the beginning of 2020. It did take a, a big dive initially. Initially it did, but then it quickly rebounded and shot up to about $150 per share. And so far it's tracking a 25% year-to-date return without including the dividend yield. So once again, this is the power of cloud computing, of, of having a REIT that holds cloud computing when market conditions don't allow people to work at the office. Similar to DLR is another REIT known as Cyrus One Inc., which are ticker symbol cone. Yes, just like the ice cream cone. This is the summary page. They're sitting. They're currently at about seventy-two dollars per share. Currently, they have a eleven percent year-to-date return, not including the dividend yield. So they've done quite well. Also, very much related to cloud computing and housing cloud computing service. Once again, very similar to Cone and DLR is Equinix Inc. Very similar and they're up 17% year to date. So as you can see, I'm driving home the point that cloud computing servers are REITs are doing quite well. Nix is one of my favorite newest REITs that I've added to my portfolio. Towards the end of 2019 is when I've added this and boy, I am so glad I did. This is Crown Castle International Corp. And what they do is you wouldn't know it by their name, but they basically own a huge amount or a huge percentage of the cell phone towers throughout the United States. And what they do is they lease that that tower and that data data usage to, they rent it out to Sprint, AT&T, Verizon, and a lot of the big mobile providers. And that's, that's basically what they do. As you can imagine how important it is in this world, in this economy, to have a functioning cell phone and to have be able to relay that data across the airwaves. I mean, it is so important. And so this particular rate has been doing fantastic even in these conditions. Currently it's sitting at $161 per share. They have about a 3% yield or just under it. And you can see here, now it didn't go up as quickly as DLR, some of the other ones we just looked at, but still year to date in 2020, it is still crushing the S&P 500 at a 13.69% return. Now, if you want to get into REITs that own cell phone towers, Crown Castle International is not your only option. You also have the American Tower Corporation, which also does very similar business as, as CCI, the other one we were just looking at. And they are not performing as well as CCI, but they're still up 6% or 6.5% compared to the S&P 500, which is down 12% for the year. So these are two that I would like you to take a look at going forward, and you might consider adding some of these to your portfolio. The next street we're looking at is Safehold Inc., our ticker symbol SAFE. And they've gone up about 20% year to date so far in 2020. Now, they, they are trending downward, as you can see a little bit, but they're still up overall for the year. Now let's go back to the summary page and I wasn't really familiar with SAFE before, but basically, as you can see here, this is what they do, is they 
They are revolutionizing real estate ownership by providing a new and better way for owners to unlock the value of the land beneath their buildings. Through its modern ground lease capital solution, Safehold helps owners of high quality, multifamily, office, industrial hospitality, and mixed use properties in major markets throughout the United States generate higher returns with less risk. Those are the types of REITs that have been increasing in value in this condition. But, but there are many that most REITs, most investments, in fact, most of my REITs have gone down in value, some significantly, and that is what I want to discuss with you next here, real quick as we start to wrap up this video, is to show you what REIT sectors or REIT type of properties have been hit the hardest, and you can probably guess what they are, but let's dive into that right now. As I wrap this up for you guys, I want to leave you with a couple thoughts. The REITs that we looked at that are showing strength in 2020, I really do think they're going to continue to demonstrate that strength. They're going to flex their muscle in 2020 and beyond. I, I really do. Their yields aren't as high right now because their share price is up, but I think they're relatively secure in the big scheme of things. Versus, we also looked at the REITs that are showing weakness, and I wanted to show you that in particular because there's a lot of bargains or maybe a lot of value in those companies that have fallen. We've definitely looked at the REITs in the commercial sector. Obviously, there you can see that there's malls that are closed down, there's retail that's closed down, and it's really impacting these REITs, which own that real estate, and it's questionable whether or not the tenants are going to be paying rent going forward or pay at a reduced rent. I have no idea yet. So that's when you're looking at these REITs, the ones that are showing weakness, you have to look at it from that vantage point and that perspective. Oh, the Realty Income Corporation is one of my favorite REITs. That right now is has a current yield of almost 6%. Financially, they've always been conservative. They've been able to increase their dividends for the past 20, 25, uh, 25 26 years. If you're investing in individual REITs versus an ETF, you always have to look at the individual company and make sure that they're credit worthiness isn't getting hammered. REITs function based on the ability to borrow money at a, an attractive rate to be able to acquire more properties, more real estate, and so on and so forth. If their credit rating is diminished due to these current economic factors and conditions, it's certainly going to hurt their borrowing rate, which could hurt their underlying profits, and which would then affect our underlying cash flow, right? All of it ties back to that. So, what I'm saying is there's a lot of bargains right now. There's a lot of discounts on these REITs, and that's why I wanted to show you that, that you might look into dollar cost averaging in, adding to your positions, but do so carefully. Look carefully at their financials to see if it makes sense and see if the, the risks make sense for the yield. You're going to see those companies that have taken a beating are going to have higher yields relative to their share price because of the decline in share price value. But always manage your risk and reward. You have to make and you have to make that decision as an investor for yourself. You ha we all do. We all have to decide what's worth it and what's not. I'm certainly going to be adding to my positions in some of these, but not a lot of money. I'm going to very carefully ease in, especially if the market doesn't, if the economy doesn't reopen later this year, it could really impact these REITs further and they could further decline in value. But who knows? Who knows where this is going to go? But if it goes up in value, these share prices are pretty attractive. I'm not going to lie, especially EPR, where I heard recently by reading an article saying that the management is considering doing share buybacks at these low price levels of $23 per share for that entertainment property rate. And it's showing a dividend yield right now of 20%. But risky dividend yield, it's risky. And it may some of these may have to scale back their dividends for the time being. But these are all factors to be thinking about when you're ever you're investing in REITs and one of the things I'm keeping an eye on. All right, the viewer comment I wanted to respond to is by Chris Hansen. And he says, the only way that you're earning $100,000 a year in dividends or annually is if you take a small $1 million loan from POP. Meaning that in order to achieve $100,000 a year dividend income, we would need to borrow money from our parents. And I get this comment a lot, which is even, like I understand it's not a question, but I, I get this so often, like every month, 
I think I have like three or four people every single month send me a question like this or a comment just like this regarding dividend investing and building a significant income with dividends. And the way I want to respond to that is uh, there's a couple different things that I would hope that Chris understands and I, I want to share with all of you is that your investing time horizon really plays a huge role in how much money it takes to achieve a significant amount of money in dividends annually. If you start investing at 20 or 25 or whatever it may be in your early 20s and you invest consistently throughout the rest of your life, it takes far, far less money than if you to achieve that goal, to achieve $100,000 a year in dividends or whatever amount in dividends, than it would if you didn't start until you were like 30, 40, 50, or whatever, however many years old. If you, to his comment though, uh, if you were trying to go from, because we're right now we're in 2020 when I'm filming this, if you were to want 100 grand in dividends by next year, by 2021, well then you're, how much money are you going to need right away? Well, you're probably going to need to invest $3 million, probably, give or take, because you only have one year to invest before you need the money. But if you don't need the money for 40 years, because you started investing when you're early 20s, then it takes way less money than that, guys. So I've ran several different compounding interest calculations, and I don't have them here in front of me on screen, but I can tell you this, that if you have 30 or 40 years to invest, compounding interest will take 60% of the work off your back, just because you have that time horizon. So the amount you need to invest is roughly only half of that amount or 40% of it because compounding interest is going to do the rest of the work for you. And so that's why I think I showed in one of my previous videos that even a time difference of starting investing at 25 versus I think like 30, I mean, it can save you hundreds of thousands of dollars that you would need to invest to achieve the same goal. Just in that five year difference, it's huge. The sooner you invest, the, the faster you're going to get there and the less money it's going to take. And so the answer to how much money you would need to invest to earn $100,000 a year in dividends is going to vary for every single person in this room. Every single person watching this is going to have a different answer and a, and a different investing time horizon than, than you and I. It's just the way it is. And, but that's why I encourage people, to, as soon as you know you want to invest, start investing early, invest consistently, watch compounding interest happen, watch dividend growth happen as well of companies increasing their dividend payout, which you would not just get just from normal interest. You wouldn't get that. But with you can actually invest in something that pays you a yield and that your yield on those shares continues to increase year after year after year and so on and so forth. Doesn't mean it goes up every year. Some years it goes down. But historically, though, it typically climbs. It typically increases in the long run. And that's the beauty of dividend investing. And that's just what I want to say to that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that like button. Leave your comments and questions below. I can't wait to read what you have to say. I always appreciate viewer feedback. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Have a wonderful week, guys. Live life on cage, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.